This is the Decoding Obesity Podcast, where we simplify, demystify, and decode obesity, helping you lose weight and feel great. Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Dr. Avishkar Sabharwal. So gear up for a fascinating journey through this ever-evolving field, and let's see what we find. And please remember that the thoughts and opinions on this podcast do not constitute medical advice. Don't forget to visit our website, www.decodingobesity.com, for show notes and more info. Hello, everyone. There is a relatively new type of addiction that people are talking about these days. I'm, of course, talking about food addiction. I want to take some time to discuss this since food is such an integral part of our culture and lifestyle. Food has been at the center table literally of every culture throughout history. We have such a close relationship with food. We consume food not only to nourish ourselves but also for pleasure. And that's what makes us human. It is the pleasurable effect of food I want to talk about. Let's delve briefly into the science of how it actually affects our brain. If you're liking this podcast, please don't forget to subscribe and give 5-star reviews. Let's begin by understanding what a hyperpalatable food is. Simplistically, a hyperpalatable food is something that taps into the pleasure center of your brain, sometimes even hijacks it to make you want more of that food. Humans, as smart as we are, have figured out various combinations that can do that. While there is no consensus on the general definition of such a food, but I think everyone can relate to this. Let's do a simple exercise to understand this better. Don't worry, it will take a few seconds and you don't need to stop what you're doing, but please do this on a relatively full stomach for obvious reasons. I just want you to think back and see what your comfort food or your guilty pleasure is. Now that you have that food in your mind, I want you to play a little scientist. What macronutrients do you think that food contains. What you will find is that typically our comfort foods contain fat, simple carbohydrates or sugars, and or sodium or salt in relatively high percentages. Most, if not all, ultra-processed foods produced commercially are hyperpalatable. It's not just the macronutrients in these foods that make them hyperpalatable but also the additional products to enhance the rewarding properties like flavor enhancers, etc. If you chose broccoli or spinach as your comfort food, then kudos to you. I certainly did not. Numerous studies done on these types of foods show that these foods are highly pleasurable and have an increased capacity to stimulate eating, sometimes even to a point where it may seem that you've lost control over this. Since food is essential and not optional, this concept is often difficult to grasp. Now you may be wondering why our brain has been wired like this. Let's delve into our history a little bit. Historically, we never had this abundance of food that we have now. Evolutionarily, it made sense for us to have this adaptation to motivate consumption of calorie-dense foods which would have been critical for our survival in times of scarcity. This adaptation was crucial for our survival then, but is obviously detrimental to our health now. I want to take some time to highlight some of the similarities between these hyperpalatable foods and addictive drugs. Since these foods are ultra-processed, many of these foods often cause a very rapid absorption of sugar just by the nature of their processing. Let's see how this compares to cocaine. Cocaine comes from coca leaves, which are found in South America. Now, coca leaves by themselves have very limited addiction potential, but once you transform it, process it, refine it, and make cocaine out of it, it has a high addiction potential. Similarly, foods that are present in nature have that sheathing of fiber and other nutrients along with the sugars that are present in them. But once they're ultra-processed, what we're left with is simple sugars that are very rapidly absorbed. This will often lead to elevated levels of reward, making them highly addictive. In the brain, these foods activate the dopamine and opioid circuitry, 
leading to elevated levels of reward. They can lead to tolerance, which means you will need more of it to get the same high, just as with drugs of abuse. They can cause you to have cue-triggered cravings, which means certain cues may cause you to crave for these foods. For example, you may pass by your favorite fast food restaurant and you see their logo or their sign and you crave for their food. You may not necessarily be hungry at that time, but you would still crave for it. There was a study done on the reward potential of sweetness in rats and what researchers found was that cocaine addicted rats will choose saccharin that is a calorie free sweetener over cocaine which led to the conclusion that rewarding potentials of sweetness may be greater than that of cocaine. A recent study done at the National Institute of Health highlights the elevated levels of reward that we achieve from these ultra processed foods. The researchers admitted volunteers to the hospital. They divided them into two groups. They were to receive either ultra processed or unprocessed diets for two weeks, immediately followed by the alternate diet for two weeks. Meals were designed to be matched for presented calories in each meal, energy density of the meals, macronutrient makeup, sugar content, sodium and fiber content. The volunteers were instructed to consume as much or as little as they desired. And what was found was that the energy intake was greater during the ultra-processed diet with a proportional weight gain with the ultra-processed foods and weight loss with the unprocessed foods. Again, highlighting the fact that ultra-processed foods hijack our brain to want us to eat more. If you're liking this podcast, please don't forget to subscribe and give 5-star reviews. I want to highlight that food industry obviously knowing this science uses it to their advantage. The onus falls on the consumers to understand this science and this is why I wanted to do this episode. There is a lot of advertisement of health foods but it is important to understand that in low fat foods for example the fat is often replaced with sugar and other ingredients making them hyper palatable. After all the food companies want you to consume more of their foods. So they have to make it more appealing. I have never seen an advertisement for spinach, cauliflower, mushroom or any vegetable or fruit, but I do see a lot of advertisements for fruit juices, smoothies, chips, snacks, beverages, all of which are hyper palatable foods. My intention here is not to take on the food industry, but to make you the listener aware of how these foods work. I believe that the commercial food industry is achieving what it intends to achieve. that is bringing pleasure to the palate of course there is no fun in living if we can't enjoy certain pleasures in life food being a big one but moderation is key that's all we have time for today hope you enjoyed this episode please don't forget to subscribe and give five star reviews i'll see you all next time this podcast should not be used in any legal capacity whatsoever The thoughts and opinions expressed on this podcast are solely of the host and his guests. They do not necessarily represent the views and opinions of any organization. And that brings us to the end of this show. Thank you so much for listening in. And please remember that the thoughts and opinions on this podcast do not constitute medical advice. Don't forget to visit our website www.decodingobesity.com for show notes and more info.